What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I'm going to be sharing a bunch of great tips to help you guys win more gunfights in Apex Legends. Now to start this off, it's really important to understand how damage works in this game. Unlike most first person shooters where guns will have a damage drop off range, each of the guns in Apex Legends has their own damage profile and it doesn't drop off at any range, so it'll deal the same amount of damage at point blank range compared to across the map. There is one exception to this though, and this is the headshot damage. Now the headshot damage multiplier will range between 1.4 and 2 times in Apex Legends, which means if you're comfortable in a situation aiming for the head, it's absolutely worthwhile with most of the weapons in most situations. However, every gun has a range at which they no longer deal that extra headshot damage. Anything beyond that range, it will deal the same amount of damage as if you were shooting them in the body. For pistols and SMGs, this is a relatively short range at roughly 40 meters, depending on the gun. And then for assault rifles and sniper rifles, it will extend much further. So that's just something to keep in mind with the damage values in this game. And this brings us to one of the tips that I have for you guys before you even get into the game. I would highly encourage you to go to your gameplay settings, scroll down to damage numbers, and change it from the default, which is stacked, all the way over to the right, which will show both. With this setting, it will add up the damage values for you, so if you hit three shots, for instance, in really quick succession, it will add those up so you see the total damage dealt, but in addition to that, it will also show the individual damage you've dealt per shot, which I feel really helps me track what's going on in the game and how much damage I've actually dealt. If you have it on just stacked, then it only shows you that total damage, and it can get a little bit confusing sometimes, like how many shots did I actually hit in that situation. Whereas if you have it on just floating, then it won't add those up for you. It'll show the individual hits and how much damage they've dealt. But then you're stuck doing math in your head trying to figure out like how much health he's going to have left after that situation. So this is why I really like using the both setting. This brings us to the next tip, and this is actually getting to the gameplay itself. One of the biggest complaints I've seen with Apex Legends, and I personally had this complaint when the game first dropped as well, is the magazine capacity is just tiny unless you have a really good extended mag on your gun. Since these magazines tend to be so small and the health can be so high, especially when the enemies have armor, I found an excellent strategy for winning more gunfights is to have a regular primary weapon that's designed to be versatile, and this is your main weapon that you will start most of your gunfights with. And then for your secondary, instead of trying to have like a complementary gun, like you have one that's designed for close range when your primary is more for long range or vice versa, my secondary weapon slot, I like to fill with what I call a finishing weapon. So this will be something like the Wingman Revolver, which deals a high amount of damage per shot, or maybe the Peacekeeper Shotgun. Those are my top two favorite finishing weapons. And the way I approach my situations is I go into a fight with my primary, I will unload my entire magazine if that's what it takes to kill that person, which it often will if they've got armor and they're moving around a bunch. And once my magazine is empty, instead of trying to take cover and go for a reload, I swap to my finisher, and generally, I just have to hit them one time, and then they're dead. This has saved me in so many situations where I otherwise would have been trying to frantically reload my gun and take cover and everything. Instead of worrying about that, I have my finishing weapon ready to go, so I just swap once I'm out of ammo, boom, fire one shot, and I've got myself an easy kill. This brings us to the next tip that I have for you guys that really applies to those mid to somewhat longer range situations where you're in a gunfight and somebody's shooting at you, and this is reposition yourself. It's amazing how effective this can be. You can use that movement to your advantage. It's really hard to hit somebody that's sliding especially, so if you find yourself in a not so great position and the enemy isn't like right on top of you, then don't be afraid to try and reposition. Maybe try and get some high ground. You could maybe go over and try and parkour yourself onto a rooftop or simply do a big loop and flank around the enemy. I'm actually amazed at how many times I've completely bamboozled somebody because they just expected me to sit behind the same piece of cover and trade shots with them. Or better yet, in a lot of situations where I end up against somebody up close and I don't like that situation, I simply run away and they start chasing me and then I reposition myself on a rooftop or around a corner or something and they'll just blindly charge in after me and it's essentially a free kill. So if you find yourself in a situation and you don't like how things are turning out, always try to reposition if possible. The next tip that I have for you guys to maximize your odds in gunfights is always try to spread out a little bit from your teammates, but having said that, try to be within a few seconds of each other. So what I mean by this is if you find yourself in a really bad situation and you know you're screwed, your teammates should be able to get to you within like three to five seconds or so. Any longer than that, and you probably have no chance if you get yourself in a bad situation. And it's the same thing for your teammates. If they get in a bad situation, you should be able to get to them and be able to help them within roughly three to five seconds. At the same time, though, you do want to make sure that you're not just hugging your teammates all the time. Because in those situations, if the enemy gets a jump on you too, they can often spray both of you down really easily. On the same note of teamwork, it's much easier to win gunfights 
when it's a 2v1 situation. This is the type of game where the time to kill is quite slow and a lot of damage is needed to finish off an enemy. As a result, it's very heavily catered towards team play and having multiple teammates doing damage to an enemy at once. It can be very difficult for a solo player, no matter how good you are, it can be very difficult to take on two enemies at the exact same time. Most of the time when I'm able to wipe a squad by myself, it's because they weren't working together and they came at me one at a time. So make sure when the situation allows for it, you attack with your teammates to deal the most amount of damage at once. Another tip that I have for you guys once you're in an actual gunfight, especially at closer ranges, is make sure you're strafing back and forth in a gunfight. This is a really basic sort of tip that applies to basically every first person shooter I've ever played. However, I did also want to point out, at really close ranges, it's extremely effective to hip fire while strafing back and forth. You're a very hard target to hit when you do this because you have a faster movement speed, and the hip fire in this game on most of the guns is actually pretty good. So, especially if you find yourself in the same building as someone, or let's just say you're within roughly 5 meters of them, hip firing while strafing back and forth makes you a very hard target to hit, and you'll still be dealing a decent amount of damage per second. It might not be quite as much damage dealt per second as if you were aiming down sight and trying to be more precise, but you'll generally be avoiding a lot more damage by doing this, which can make it a very effective strategy. As for the next tip, this is something that I've shared in a previous Apex Legends video, and this is I highly encourage you to keep your shield cells in your medical slot. The reason for this is it's simply the most efficient way of getting 25 health back if you find yourself in a stressful situation. You can activate the shield cell in just 3 seconds, which is faster than any of the other healing items, and this often allows you, even in a relatively stressful gunfight, to quickly take cover, pop that shield for 3 seconds, and get back in the fight with 25 extra health when the enemy probably wasn't thinking about doing the same thing. This brings us to the next set of tips when it comes to winning gunfights, and this is everything that goes on before you get yourself into the gunfight. Setting yourself up before you even fire a shot is key to winning gunfights more effectively. The first tip is definitely going to be obvious to a lot of you, but it's clearly not obvious to everyone. This is, don't always engage the moment you see an enemy, especially when you see him at longer ranges. Just because you see him, and just because your teammates pinged their location, this doesn't mean immediately start firing at them. Instead, you're much better off coming up with a plan of attack, or going for the high ground and setting yourself up into a great position for when you actually do want to engage those enemies. Because especially on console where it's pretty difficult to aim at really long ranges, that gunfight probably isn't going to go anywhere if you start popping shots at them. You might deal a little bit of damage here and there, but they'll usually just find cover and heal up anyways, and then you're just in a stagnant fight, and then at that point, oftentimes the third team comes in and either cleans up the guys you were shooting at, or they flank you guys and sandwich you between those enemies you were shooting at. This leads us to the next tip, and this one is extremely effective. Always try to be that third team in, if possible. So what I mean by this is if you hear a fight going on somewhere in the vicinity, go towards that fight. And don't just rush in there like a chicken with your head cut off, otherwise you might end up between two teams. But just go to the situation, try and get eyes on it and eyes on the enemy. And then from there, especially if you see those enemy teams trading a lot of damage with each other, this is when you want to push in and just clean everybody up. A lot of people see this as cheap and it's really frustrating when it happens to you, but that's just the nature of a battle royale game. You are going to get third partied and it's much better to be that third team in rather than have that happen to you. On that same note, if you find yourself in a fight that has been getting stagnant and it's going on for quite a long time, always be aware of that third team coming in. This will often happen. Don't get tunnel vision on the enemies you've been trading shots with. Always take a quick look around just to see if there's another team coming in, because it's these situations that are probably the most dangerous to be in. And this leaves us with one final tip that I want to talk about within this particular area, and that is don't let your fights go on for too long. Once you put a significant amount of damage into a player or you down one of the enemy players, push immediately. Don't just hang back and let their teammates come up and revive them. Push immediately and finish them up, even if it means giving up a power position that you have. I find that this is often the best tactic, rather than just standing around and waiting for them to be revived, picking a few more shots off on them, they take cover, they heal up, and then the third team comes in and steals all your kills anyways. If you break somebody's armor or you down an enemy player, push with your team and clean them up quickly. This puts a lot of pressure on the enemies as well. Most of the enemies, they'll go straight for the revive, especially if you're at like a mid to somewhat longer range and they don't normally expect an entire team to converge on them as they're trying to get that revive off. I've gotten so many easy double and sometimes even triple kills because I've downed somebody and then immediately their teammates just rush in trying to revive them, so I just come in and it's an easy three-piece to clean them all up. And with that, that's going to wrap up today's video on how to win more gunfights in Apex Legends. If you put all these tips together and you keep practicing, I can guarantee you'll start getting more and more kills and more wins.
If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time. Oh, 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 oh,